Happy Monday. Welcome to the Life After 50 show. This is what you need to know for the second half of your journey today. I'm Katherine Watson. I'll be your host. And this show is sponsored by FindHoustonSeniorCare.com, the one-stop shop for everything senior care in Houston, Texas and surrounding areas. Find Houston Senior Care helps you connect directly with assisted living communities, home care companies, hospice providers, elder law attorneys, and so much more. With over 500 articles, podcasts, and videos on the website, we'll be able to answer just about any question you have. So thanks for tuning in. If you have any comments or questions, please put them in the uh, comment area below. I love to uh, interact with you and hear what you need to know so that I can give you that information. Today, I am not gonna have a guest on. Today, it's gonna be just me. I um, wanna talk to you about assisted living. Um, I know when my family first needed this uh, particular type of care for my mother-in-law, we really didn't know a whole lot about it. Uh, so we were kind of floundering. She had fallen and broken a pelvic bone and was in the hospital in Louisiana. And we were going to move her to Houston. And we were thinking we probably needed assisted living. But like many people, we didn't know much about it. We didn't know uh, how much it cost. We didn't know uh, what 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 we needed to know. We we didn't even know the questions to ask. So hopefully today I'll give you a pretty good overview of assisted living. I won't be able to tell you everything about every assisted living place out there. They're all different, uh, but I will be able to give you an overview so that when you go out there you are a little bit more equipped to look. You understand the different types of assisted living. And, and yes, there are different types and you're able to um, understand and know who to talk to in an assisted living facility and what questions to ask. So let's get started. Um, I'm gonna start off with the basics here in Texas. Now, sometimes, there we go, type A or type B. Uh, there may be some people that are not from Texas or looking in another state. Mostly what I'm gonna be talking about is Texas rules. It may be different in your state, but it'll give you a basis and an overall um, vision of what assisted living is about. And then you can ask the appropriate questions in your state. So in Texas, Assisted living facilities and homes have to be licensed. And there's two types of licenses that are given. There's a type A and a type B. And it's very simple, the difference. In a type A assisted living facility or home, the residents all have to be able to exit in case of an emergency by themselves. In other words, they have to physically and mentally understand and be able to get out of the house if it was on fire or if there was a flood or if there was some kind of a um, event that they had to evacuate. Now, that doesn't mean somebody can't be in a wheelchair. They can be in a wheelchair as long as they can ambulate themselves. They can get themselves out the door. They don't need assistance from somebody to do that. That's a type A. Most of the assisted living facilities you're gonna find here in Texas are gonna be a type B. And that covers people who do need some assistance. Mom does need help getting from the chair into the wheelchair to get out the door in case of an emergency. That's a type B facility. So you've got type A and type B. That's the first step, know what you need. Now you might wanna really think about a type A um, if you're considering that. What are the long-term needs? One thing you don't wanna do is move somebody continuously. You wanna try to find the best place 
the first time so that your aging parent or your spouse or whoever it is that you're helping place into an assisted living, they move one time and they get settled in and they can make friends and they can acclimate to the community. If you start moving people multiple times, it can get become very hard on them. Anybody who's ever moved, I don't care what age you've moved, it's not easy. And it takes time acclimating to your new surroundings. But for a senior, it's even harder. So try to pick the best. And that that's one reason why I tend to lean. If you're going to go assisted living, you might want to look more at the type B. Now, you may find a community that has independent living and assisted living. And that's a nice fit. Because as they progress and need more care, they can move into the assisted living. That's actually what we did with my mother-in-law. We moved her into an independent place and they were building an assisted living. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to go into their assisted living because it wasn't ready when she finally needed it. Okay, so let's talk about needs. If your parent, and we'll just talk about parents, but it could be your spouse, it could be somebody else, okay? But I'm just going to use the word parent. So if your parent needs care around the clock 24-7, okay, they need somebody there in the middle of the night if they have to go to the bathroom, they need somebody to help them go, then they need assisted living. If they just need a little bit of care here and there, somebody to come in during the day and help with a few tasks or somebody to help them get uh, their shower and get dressed, then maybe independent with a little home care on the side would be just fine for them. But today we're talking about and about assisted living. So, now that we've gotten the type A and type B down, you understand that? Let's talk about size because there's also um, each assisted living is licensed for a certain number of residents. And they have what, what is called small assisted living, and that will be anything under six, 16 beds and under. And then the large, anything over 16 beds. And that could be 40 beds, it could be 100 beds, it could be, you know, whatever size. Anything over 16 beds would fall into the large category. So in Houston, if you've looked around, the Brookdales, the Atrias, um, these are examples of large assisted living facilities. They're big, they're... Um, each person still has their own apartment. Uh, usually in assisted living, they will not have a kitchen. They don't need one. Some of the assisted livings understand that that's something that a lot of seniors don't want to give up. So they'll have a small kitchen built in. It won't really be a, a fully functioning kitchen. There probably will not be a stove in there. There will be a refrigerator. There'll be a microwave things like that, and the feeling of a kitchen. But they don't need a kitchen because they're going to get three meals a day plus snacks. All of that is taken care of in an assisted living facility. Assisted living facilities will have activities for the residents. Uh, the larger facilities will bring in entertainment. They'll have activities. They'll have something going on probably anywhere from three to five hours a day, there'll be something going on. So it's a very active lifestyle. If you've got a parent that um, uh, is very active, they want to be involved, they, they like a lot of activity and a lot of interaction with people, a large facility might be something you want to look at. But let's talk about the small ones now. They also have activities. Um, they have uh, 16 beds or less. Usually the licensed ones, if you're over 
three beds, you have to be licensed. Let me just pull up a slide I have on this to give you an idea. Let's take this one down. Okay. So we're going to talk about a uh, residential care home or assisted living facilities. And I'm going to bring that up larger. I'm going to take my. Let's put this in here. There we go. Okay. So there may be only three beds in this assisted living. And uh, they're not licensed. So number one, as with any place, licensed or unlicensed, you need to do your homework. You need to check them out. You need to uh, uh, do a social media check on them. See what's showing up. Uh, you want to do um, just a whole Google search on them and see what's showing up. Uh, are there good reviews anywhere? Are there bad reviews anywhere? You want to talk to uh, care uh, families that are already there. You want to talk to um, uh, other uh, companies that may go in there. Talk to your home care providers, your home health care providers, your elder law attorneys. These people usually have a pretty good handle on what's going on in the different homes in their community, and they can steer you in the right direction. 
your hospice team, they're very good at that. They know what's going on in these homes. I have some three bed homes that are listed on the website that are excellent. I would put anybody I loved in one of these homes because they just give superb care. But just like anything else, you want to do your own research. You want to check them out. Don't just take one person's word for it because you don't know, honestly, if that person is telling you that that's a good place because they do business with them or if that's a good place because it really is a good place. So it's important really to pay attention to that. Now, there's some advisors out there. If you're going to get an L a, um, elder care advisor, somebody to help you find an assisted living, get somebody local. Don't get somebody that's up in Ohio and doesn't know your area. Get somebody local. There's some great local companies here. Um, I know a lot of them. They're able to assist you and help you. So if you need somebody to hold your hand and walk you through this process and help you find the best assistant living, then reach out and talk to some of these people. If any of them are on the call today, please feel free to uh, type in the comments below who you are um, and that you're here and that you have, um, you know, put your put your contact information in there. I have no problem with that. Uh, so I, I, the main thing is just get somebody that's local that can help you, okay? Uh, if you want to do your search on your own, find Houston Senior Care website is a great place. I have a list of care homes and every week it's updated. And all of these care homes I've been to personally, I approve of them. That doesn't mean you don't have to do your own homework. You still need to. It's important. Things can change. And it's also a very personal fit. When you're looking for a care home or an assisted living facility, a large assisted living facility for an aging parent, one thing you need to keep in mind is it's about them. It's not about you. So just because you like a certain style of living doesn't mean your aging parent does. You might be comfortable with a more elegant place to live, and they might be comfortable with a more homey place to live. So you have to take that in mind. It's about what they're comfortable with. Now, let's go back again to the large versus small, because people are calling me all the time and saying, Catherine, what's the best place out there? There is no best place out there for everybody. Everybody's needs are different. If you have a parent, they're still active, they're still walking around, they may or may not have some cognitive problems. And but they're, they're still walking around doing a lot of things. A small residential care home may not be the best place for them. If there's not a lot of room to move around, they're not going to be happy. So if you go with the small, you'd want to go with the larger size, maybe the 16 bed. Or you may want to look at the large facilities where they have plenty of room to roam around, where they have things going on in multiple rooms. They have a TV room over here and they have uh, a craft room over here. And maybe they have a Bible study going on over here. That may be more appealing. So you have to know what the needs are of the person that's looking for some place to live. Okay. If your parent needs a lot of extra care, maybe they're diabetic, maybe they have a feeding tube. Some of the small assisted living care homes are nurse run. And as such, they're able to help with those additional tasks, those additional medical problems and tasks that need to be handled. So you can look for that. Now, most of the big facilities have a nurse on board. That does not mean the nurse is going to be there 24-7. Okay, she's got to take a break too. 
And chances are they usually have one nurse. Some of them may have two. So understand that the nurse is not there 24-7. Same way in the residential care homes. Most of the ones that I have gone to, uh, there's maybe nurse run, but the nurse doesn't live there. Okay, She lives close and she can get there on a moment's notice and she keeps in great contact with her caregivers. But usually at night, it's the caregiver that's going to be taking care of, of the situation and, and taking care of any needs that may arise in the middle of the night. But there's somebody there to assist, and that's the key. So we talked about type A and type B. We talked about small versus large. And let's talk now about the cost, because that's always on everybody's mind, the cost of assisted living. And it is not inexpensive. And yes, you are going to be paying for it, or your parent is going to be paying for it. It is going to come out of pocket, okay? In other words, Medicare does not pay for assisted living, not in Texas anyway. Now, there are a few exceptions. I think there might be two or three properties in Houston that have a certain number of Medicaid, uh, Medicaid, not Medicare, Medicaid beds. Medicare never pays for assisted living, okay? Medicaid may pay for very limited places. So you're not going to have very many choices. I wouldn't count on that. For the most part, assisted living, consider that to be private pay. Now, there's some options there. There is a very little known uh, veterans benefit called the AIDS and attendance benefit that you can get that will cover both the veteran and the veteran spouse. If either one of them or both of them need assisted living, and it can pay quite a bit, up to, I think, a couple of thousand dollars. I don't know the exact fees right now. If we've got any attorneys listening, please uh, pop in there and feel free to uh, let us know what the, the information is on that. But this is something you have to apply for. You do have to qualify. It's not quite as hard to qualify for as it is to qualify for Medicaid. The uh, restrictions are not as, as it's not as restrictive. It's not, um, it's a little bit more lenient. But you can get with an elder law attorney and get that kind of information. And I'm hoping to have an elder law attorney on the show soon. I've reached out to a couple of them. So I've just got to get them uh, lined up on our show. So hopefully uh, towards the end of this month, I'll have an elder law attorney to talk to you about some different things. And maybe veterans benefits will be one of those. But these benefits are separate from any other benefits you may already be getting as a veteran. So it's something you really need to look into if you or your spouse needs assistance. You need home care. You need assisted living care, you need memory care, any of those things, okay? You need to um, uh, look into the veterans benefits because that could really help. In Houston, assisted living, the small assisted living homes, most of them are an all-inclusive fee, some of them may have an additional fee if you have additional needs. So if you're that diabetic that needs a shot every every week, if you're that um, person that has the feeding tube, there may be an additional charge. If you have been diagnosed with Alzheimer's, there may be a, an additional charge, okay? But for the most part, they're uh, pretty much uh, all-inclusive. And that makes it nice for budgeting purposes. I really like that. You can expect to spend on the low end for a decent place in Houston, about $2,200. On the high end, $55,000, $6,000, maybe 6000 
Somewhere in the middle, I'd say they range mostly from about 3,200 to 4,500 would be about the average. And that's going to depend on whether you choose a private room or a semi-private room. Now, when we started looking, the thought of putting my mother-in-law in a semi-private room, we just we just could not go there. In hindsight now, I, we look back and we think, why did we pay an extra $1,000 for a private room? She was never in her room. And that's the truth. The only time they're usually in their room is at night. They want them to get out and socialize with others. It's important for mental health. Um, so, you know, they're not in their rooms. And it probably would have been comforting to her to have somebody else in the room at night. But it's a preference. It's a family preference. And if you want the uh, private room, you're going to pay more for it. Just know that. Uh, just like in a nursing home. If you want the private room, you're going to pay more for it. Uh, if you want a semi-private room, you can usually get um, a little bit of a price break. So if money is a is a hard line for you, um, you're very limited on funds, that may be what you need to do. And I promise you the facilities, the homes, they're, they're able to help your parent adjust. And um, you'd be surprised at how fast they do adjust. And many of them really like having that roommate. So that's something to look for. Uh, another way to pay for assisted living is if your parent was smart enough to go ahead and buy that long-term care insurance policy. Long-term care insurance is not that in, not inexpensive. Um, it is a, a cost, but boy, howdy, when you need it, it sure can be a ben benefit because with your long-term care policy, now that extends how much you have to take out of pocket. And every long-term care policy is different, so I can't tell you how much it will pay. You'll have to check with yours. So if you have an aging parent and maybe they're at home right now, but you're thinking in the future, this may be what you are going to have to do. You want to look into that. You want to find out, do they have a long-term care policy? And if they do, you want to find out what does it pay? How many years does it pay? How, how much does it pay? You want to get all of that information because that's going to help you when the time comes. And trust me, the more information you have ahead of time, even if you wait until there's a crisis to do anything, it's going to be so much easier. It's not going to be easy. It's never easy, but it's going to be a lot easier if you already have your ducks in a row. You already know what you need, what needs to happen, what it's going to cost, where the money is going to come from. These are critical things to know. So we've covered type A and type B, small or large. And there's a right one for everybody. Nothing, no, no one stop for everybody. We've covered the cost of assisted living. Oh, I no, I didn't. I covered the cost on the smalls. Let's talk about the large. Most of the large assisted living facilities will have a base price. And then they'll have, uh, well, they all have different ways that they set up their, their care levels. So they may have levels of care, A, B, C, D, and certain things fall into each category. They may have, um, you know, your basic assisted living is always going to cover your meals. It's always going to cover transportation. It's always going to cover the activities and events at the facility. But if you need help going to the bathroom, you need help getting a bath, you need help uh, with somebody to cut your food for you. Maybe you've had a stroke and you're unable to cut your own food and you need help with that. These are things that would be a higher level of care and you're going to pay extra for that. Some facilities will have it as a line item. So um, it's really kind of hard when you get out there and you start looking at assisted living facilities. I liken it to 
looking for a bed. If you've ever shopped for a bed and you go to Macy's, they have Sirtis and you're looking at Sirtis. And then you go over to JCPenney's and they've got Sirtis too, but they're never the same name. And you're not sure if you're looking at the same bed because each place sells it under a different name. Well, it's the same way with assisted living. They're going to give the same care, okay? They're going to offer the same services, but how they package them and how how they serve them to you are going to be different in each community you visit. So you really need to look at that. Don't just look at the low price coming in. They may say, oh, we're having a great special. It's only $3,000 a month. But if mom needs a lot of care, you start adding that on, it may be five or 6,000 now, okay? So it's really important that you know and think down the road. You also wanna ask them how many people, um, how, how much um, you wanna ask them about the care levels. If you can go down in care level as well as go up. Sometimes the care levels are more um, and then, you know, maybe mom just got out of the hospital and she needs a lot of care. But then in two months, she doesn't need quite as much care. Will your price go down? That's a very important question to ask. You also want to, if you're visiting a large facility, you want to talk to the executive director. You want to talk to the um, uh, activities director. Very important. You want to find a bubbly, joyful, happy activities director because that's going to be somebody that's going to help get the seniors involved. And they're going to like doing her activities. They're going to like getting together. That's going to be a good fit. You're also going to want to talk to the nurse because the nurse is the person who's going to manage those caregivers. You want to, you want to ask her specific questions. And I don't have everything laid out here to be able to tell you in this 30 minutes. In fact, I'm looking at my time and realize we're going a little bit over time today, but I feel like this is an important subject for you. So you can download um, a book I have on my website called uh, 19, 19 Red Flags That Tell You It's Time to Get Help for Mom. That's going to help you with a lot of the questions and things that you need to ask. Or you may want to purchase um, the book I have. Uh, you can find it on Amazon.com. It's called Help My Parents Are Aging. And either one of those will be able to help you. Uh, go on the website, take a look around. You'll find a lot of information there. Um, reach out if you need some help. You can reach out to me. I'll try to get back with you. Uh, reach out to me by messenger or by uh, email um, through my website. Uh, if I can't help you, I'll direct you to somebody who can. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of advisors out there. Find one that you click with if you decide to go with an advisor and find one that's local to your area because they're going to really know what's going on in your neck of the woods and they're going to be able to direct you to the right places to suit your needs. So I think we've covered a lot here. I wish I had time for more. I'm always looking for other people to come on the program with me to talk about so many topics that we need to know about. We've had some great guests already. We've had a pharmacist that talked to us about Houston cocktails. And if you didn't watch that, you need to go see that show. We had a medical exercise specialist who talked about arthritis and how to deal with the pain of arthritis and what you can do. We also talked to, um, uh, let's see, we talked to somebody from the Alzheimer's Association. We talked to Sandy Heinze with the uh, uh, care, uh, right at home caregivers. <laughs> Sorry, Sandy. Um, we talked to uh, a caregiver who had some great insights on what to do if you're long distance caregiving. And all of these shows can be found on the Find Houston Senior Care page 
our Find Houston Senior Care webpage. So you can find all of these on the Find Houston Senior Care Facebook page. Just go under live videos and click on that. All of the all of the past shows will be there. If you have something that you want to share with seniors, you want to let us know about it, message us. Message us. I'd love to get you on the program. I want to share as much information as I can. So have a good day. Again, this is Katherine Watson. Happy Monday. And this is the Life After 50 show. What you need to know. Have a great one.